Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers. This is the Apple Watch Ultra. And in this video, we are gonna give you our multi-tester verdict on Apple's latest smartwatch. Now we're gonna do things slightly different from previous videos. And each tester is gonna give you three things they like and dislike about the Apple Watch Ultra, and then give you a verdict at the end. First of all, we're gonna get into the key things you need to know from a running perspective about the Apple Watch Ultra, and then we'll get into that testing. So here's a quick rundown of the key things you need to know about the Apple Watch Ultra from a runner's perspective. The Ultra is priced at £849 in the UK or $799 in the US and it's for iOS users only. This is Apple's biggest watch to date with the Ultra packing a 49mm titanium case and a 1.8 inch Retina OLED display that can be set to always on. There's three physical buttons including the new action button, removable straps, dual speakers to improve voice support and introduce its new siren emergency feature. Key features include a new dual frequency GPS mode to improve positioning tracking, a backtrack navigation mode with offline mapping support via third party apps. There's also advanced running metrics, the ability to build custom workouts, both optical HR and external HR support as well. It runs on the same watchOS software as other Apple Watches, so you'll get all of the same smartwatch features as the latest Apple Watch Series 8. Battery life is 36 hours in full smartwatch mode and up to 60 hours in a new low power mode, which reduces the sampling rate of heart rate and GPS during tracking. GPS battery life is not specified by Apple. Straight off the bat is that it's got really good GPS. Like dual band GPS doesn't always mean a massive improvement in accuracy. We've seen that with brands like Coros and Huawei where their dual band GPS is kind of similar to previous generations. But I've done two marathons with the Apple Watch Ultra in Berlin and London. In Berlin, it pretty much was exactly the same as the Epics. It's reasonably good conditions for a major marathon in Berlin and both of them logged a pretty accurate result. And then London, the Apple Watch Ultra was a bit better because what it does do is um, it uses Apple's pedometer built in when you go through tunnels and things like that. So around Canary Wharf, the Epics went a bit crazy and the Apple Watch Ultra, you know, still went a bit mad, but recorded a pretty good track all round. So well, I have some slight queries about pacing on it sometimes. We'll come on to the things I don't like. Uh, overall, the GPS accuracy is very, very accurate and about as good as anything else out there. I also really like all the upgraded native tracking you've got here. So that's both on the hardware and software side of things. So on the software side of things, Watch OS 9, much better native workout app, a really good structured workout builder that you can do on the watch itself, all the stats you need, some nice new data screens. And then the fact that you're getting the precision start with GPS and a lap button on the Apple Watch Ultra is an upgrade that we've needed for a long time on the Apple Watch, I'd say. Um, you know, it can't give them too much praise just for adding an extra button that it's very common on sports watches, but it's there now and I do like it. So it goes in the things I like section too. Even though the nice tracking is an improvement, it's still not perfect for lots of people. But the thing with Apple Watch is you've got that app store. It's, you don't get this on any sports watch. You don't really get this on even on uh, Wear OS watches. The Apple App Store is incredibly well stocked with sports apps and everything that you're kind of missing on the watch, you can more or less cover off of the App Store. Some fantastic um, workout apps in particular. The App Store is there. It covers off everything. Pretty much the Apple Watch lacks itself natively and that's always going to be a huge strength of the watch. The thing I really like is the design. This is such a very different watch to all the other sports watches that we would kind of use, particularly when you're going into the kind of adventure endurance kind of ultra territory. The Apple Watch has a design that, you know, it's they've managed to sort of make it rugged and, and sort of tough looking and a bit kind of, you know, it's got big shoulders, but without kind of losing the kind of sleek sort of kind of subtlety that you get with an Apple Watch. And you've got that beautiful bright screen. I think it looks kind of well built. The materials are all kind of top grade. It's just very well put together. It feels great on the wrist. And overall, I think they've actually managed to make a very, very sort of beautiful, sort of rugged looking sports watch here. But by far my biggest kind of positive about this watch is that bigger battery life, which now makes this a running watch that you can, basically you can charge it every two days and get kind of good usage out of and take it on to kind of longer runs. Now, I'm not quite so sure it kind of lives up to the ultra billing. You know, I, obviously it depends how long you're going to go and run an ultra and how long it takes you. And yes, it's not up there with kind of the classics like Garmin's and Coros's that are going to go for, you know, hours and hours and hours. But in terms of making an improvement on the Apple Watch and that kind of kind of smart watch, kind of life and run crossover watch, that battery life is now compelling and it is a big, big step up. The first feature which I was impressed with from the get-go was precision start. I mean, this isn't anything new. Apple aren't reinventing the wheel, but it's new to Apple Watch and it's something that the Ultra has that none of the other Apple Watches in the market have. It basically allows you, it's a little cog in the corner, what's when you stop, when you've turned it on, you have to enable it. So if you haven't enabled it, go and enable it. And it basically lets you see that your watch has connected to GPS before you start running. 
again this is something that every other running watch has always done you can always see when you know there's a green or a tick or something to tell you that your watch is connected to gps it's a good feature to have it's something you would want on race day if you're kind of at the start line you want to know your watch is connected to gps before you get across the start line and yeah i was impressed by that and if you haven't enabled it go and enable it on your ultra i think the action button is what makes the ultra feel more like a running watch than a smart watch than any, you know the other apple watches in the market because it, you can do a lot with it apple have let you kind of customize that button so you can click it once go straight to your workout screen you can click it and go to a compass you can click it and do different things but i think for me i use it the most when i'm in a run so it lets me if i squeeze the action button and the kind of this button here the menu button the my workout will pause, my run will pause. I know there's auto pause on the watch, but for me, I want the option to pause my run. And I've always hated the fact that there wasn't a physical way to do that on the Apple Watch. I don't wanna be swiping when I'm trying to run. Um, you can also use it to lap, which is an obvious thing that you want to do if you're trying to run with this watch on a race day. You want to be able to lap every mile. So I think the action button is a big selling point. The last thing I like, it's a siren. Now I also, I also like, I'm going to caveat, I'm going to be annoying before I talk about the siren, I'm going to talk about the skin temperature sensor because I, I like that Apple have positioned this as a female kind of fertility ovulation tracking. I track my periods through a third party app, but I found that very quickly wearing this and I also have the Apple Watch 8, it's synced up and it, it is accurate. It's telling me, you know, you're likely to ovulate on these days and it, makes me feel you know oh god that's why this run felt really really hard and this run didn't but that is available on the eight now so i feel like as impressive as it is this video is about the ultra but it's a good you know it is a selling point and for me i have found the ovulation tracking has been pretty spot on it's looked at my temperature and it's flashed up and it's it's been pretty accurate when I'm using it alongside another app where I'm manually putting in those things. So, you know, I think that is a good feature, but the siren is, I think, a good feature. It's not as loud as I expected it to be. I think I said that when we were talking about the Ultra in another video, but I thought it would be like, like a rape alarm, like really loud, like a massive siren. It's not, it's probably about as loud as a hairdryer. I will, I'll set it off now. I'll film it now and let you hear it. So yeah, not that loud, but I think it's quite a distinctive sound. When I've played it, walking the dog, when I was reviewing the watch, the dog was like, you know, it's not a sound you would hear normally. And I think it lasts as long as you have battery on the watch. So, you know, if I was, I don't think Apple have positioned it as, you know, if, if you were getting attacked, which I mean, you have to talk about it. it's horrible, but you have to talk about it, don't you? It's not going to alarm someone, but I think if I were lost or if I, you know, it, it's a deterrent, isn't it? It's a, it's another kind of thing that makes you feel safe, and I, I quite like knowing it's there. I don't, hopefully would never have to use it, but I think it's you know like the fall detection, like the crash detection. It's another kind of a safety feature. Women shouldn't need these safety features on watches, but. I mean, it's good that they're there. First thing I would say is the ability to create workouts on the watch itself. Now, I typically use a Garmin, and when you have to do that, and for anyone that uses a Garmin, you know that it can feel a bit clumsy and slow to do when you have to do it off the watch. Now, on the Apple Watch Ultra, I would say it probably delivers the best experience in terms of creating workouts. If I wanted to create a workout quickly before a session that I'm doing, kind of my Tuesday or Thursday kind of track sessions, I know that I can pretty comfortably do it on the watch itself without having to kind of jump into any kind of companion app. So the second thing I really liked on the Apple Watch Ultra is the GPS performance. Now I'm not gonna massively geek out in the same way that Nick does about GPS, but ultimately it is one of those metrics that I do pay attention to. Like most people, for me it's GPS and pace are the key things that I look at. 
And from the performance that I got from the Apple Watch Ultra, I think it was very, very solid. As long as you've got that precision start mode set up on the watch, then you're gonna get very accurate GPS based on my testing. I use it at the Riven S 10K. Um, I use it in Chicago. And while it wasn't perfect in Chicago, it definitely performed better than I thought it would do, particularly against the Garmin Epix 2 as well. And we've got a video kind of covering that as well. So for me, GPS performance overall has been really, really solid on the Apple Watch. It's very good on, on previous watches, but I think that precision start mode and that kind of dual band support you're getting here, that's made things even better in terms of the accuracy that you're getting for those core metrics and that distance tracking as well. Coming on to things I don't like about the Apple Watch Ultra. So what one of them is, is a little bit kind of niche and it's something I've really noticed. I find some of the pacing stats in the watch a little bit weird. The actual distance tracking is very good and the GPS tracks are amazing, but when I'm pacing, you know, by lap pace, each split sometimes starts off really slow compared to what I'm actually running, kind of only corrects, you know, midway through the split towards the end of it. It was really noticeable for me on a park run I ran with the Epic side by side and just every single split. The Epic was just you know, holding a consistent pace as my lap pace, following on from the previous K or speeding up or whatever. But the Apple Watch only was running really slow, the lap pace. So it was hard to use it for pacing, even though the final result in terms of the splits and overall distance were great. If you just look at the uh, GPS tracks afterwards, you'll think, perfect, brilliant tracking. But on the run, if you're using the pacing a lot, it can sometimes be a little bit um, just off, just slightly off. Um, and it's actually not really something that happens with third-party apps. With, for example, Work Outdoors, the pacing is much more in line with the Epics. Uh, I think the navigation tools on the watch have not been very well done. Um, you know, the new Compass app that's been upgraded with these kind of backtrack, retrace steps, put waypoints in. It's a nice idea, but it's a separate app, and you have to keep going into that if you're going to try and use those location tools, which is fine if you're just walking around, but if you're trying to use that during an activity, you're swapping between the sports app and that kind of thing. So it's one area where the native stuff just isn't very good. You can, you can get around it using third-party apps like Work Outdoors, but I think Apple needs to refine that a fair bit in the next version of the watch. And I'd say the last thing I dislike is that there's still no real inroad into the training analysis kind of area on the Apple Watch. And that's kind of even true with third-party apps. There are some good third-party apps out there, things like Training Today, Athletic, but that can do similar things that you get from things like Garmin's training readiness or you know, Whoop's kind of readiness and strain scores, that kind of thing. Um, although I don't really judge a lot of my training by this training analysis uh, because I had a coach and I'm you know, following my plan from him, I think it's really useful, particularly Garmin's training readiness stats to have that on the wrist, give an idea of what's been going on in the body lately. And then you know, if you are having a tough time running, maybe you understand what's going on. Like as I was coming back from COVID, I was monitoring that quite closely and just seeing you know, my body is still just run down. I'm not recovering as well as, as, well as normal each night and it's really interesting stuff i think if you're taking your training very seriously and want to make sure you understand what's going on with your body i didn't love the bands i didn't love the i've got i've tried all three and don't love how both of these material bands just look a little bit grubby i've not you know i've not i've worn this one probably the mm, I've worn them about, you know, for about as long as, but they, and you know, they don't, they don't look grubby on the camera, but they just do. They look a little bit grubby. And also I think with a material band, I have, I get really bad eczema. I have really sensitive skin and I don't love the feeling of a wet band on my wrist. It, it irritates my skin a little bit. It's not ideal. Um, and you know, if you wear it in the shower or, on a run and it gets a bit sweaty and wet and then you've got a soggy band around your wrist. I don't love that. Another drawback is the size. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to, you know, everyone said, oh God, it's so big, it's so big. And I was like, do you know what? It's fine. It doesn't feel much bigger than my Garmin Phoenix 7. You know, it doesn't feel that big on my wrist. I quite like a bulky watch. It's fine. And then after a while wearing it, I didn't notice it so much running or doing exercise. I guess there's more going on. But when I was just sat by my desk or when I was sleeping, I found that it did dig in to my wrist bone a little bit. It was a little bit uncomfortable on my wrist. But I mean, it is a bigger watch. It's not the end of the world, but I do wish. I think it's just, I think it is this it's the crown, it's the bezels. I think it just, it just sits against my wrist bone a little bit uncomfortably. Now probably the biggest gripe I think people might have with this when you're sort of, again, if you're putting it into the ultra adventure bracket, the ultra adventure running going off piste is really the way that the navigation works. Now, I think, you know, with most sports watches, we're looking for kind of mapping and route planning and route following and all of those things to be sort of nicely integrated into the kind of the run app experience. And I just don't think Apple has nailed that here. I mean, obviously you can sort of beef that up with kind of third party apps like Kamut and 
and other offerings. But if you're sort of judging this based on sort of Apple's native run experience, I don't think they've done enough here. And I think that's one thing that's really going to be lacking for lots and lots of people who might be looking to take this kind of further off piste and, and, and run longer and further afield. Another thing I wasn't really very keen on, now the Apple Watch Ultra will ship with three options of bands. You've got this Alpine band, which has this kind of metal hook that kind of slides through these loops here. You've got a trail loop, which is a bit more like your kind of classic sort of nylon uh, Velcro strap that's fastened on one end. This Alpine loop I, that I first tested with was, is horrible. I don't really like it at all. I found that you couldn't really, you have to wrap this round and hook it in. I couldn't get a really nice fit. I found that when I was putting it on, this hook kind of often pinched my big chubby arms. Um, yeah, so I, if it's me, I, I wouldn't recommend that one. If you're gonna buy it and you're looking for a strap, I think the trail loop is, is much better. There is one called Ocean as well, which is designed for sort of going into the water, but I go trail loops. None of them I was a huge fan of, but you, you're obviously in, in time gonna be able to swap those out for other brands as well. First thing that really stood out for me was the kind of navigation uh, and kind of mapping support or kind of lack of mapping support that you're really getting from a running perspective. Now, someone like me, I do kind of like features like track back. I do use, I kind of go out exploring and I ultimately just want something to get me back home when I, you know, I've not really kind of uploaded a route or anything like that. Now, in terms of the navigation support in the Apple Watch Ultra, I don't think it's really built for runners right now as it stands from the kind of native point of view. The back to start feature is okay, but I think it's lacking kind of some proper mapping behind it to make it really, really useful in the way that that kind of back to start feature works on other watches. Now you can kind of delve into the Apple App Store and get some apps that are better suited to that, offer you kind of that fuller mapping, a better kind of back you know kind of navigation support as well but ultimately i want to see apple make improvements on that front from a native point of view you know, offer that kind of out of the box a much better experience because for me it's not quite there definitely doesn't feel geared towards runners for me as it stands but there's room to improve and that's ultimately what i hope apple will do on that front so the next thing for me is battery life. Now, the battery life is better on the Apple Watch Ultra day to day and also during tracking. I felt more comfortable or it felt more comfortable to run a marathon with and run the kind of longer distance than it has been the case with previous Apple Watches. But ultimately, I still feel that this is a watch in general that should be able to get closer to a week or you know four or five days that would be great I think ultimately. Now those kind of low power modes that Apple has introduced will ultimately maybe get you a little bit more battery life, but it's not a huge amount. And obviously that low power mode will sample you know, GPS and heart rate at a kind of a lower rate. So you're making compromises in terms of getting that extra battery life. And it's not that massive amount of battery life that you're getting on top. But last thing I wanna talk about, I didn't think I'd be talking about watch straps, but I think the straps that come with the Apple Watch Ultra probably aren't the best that Apple has introduced on a watch. And it's something they generally nail and have nailed in the past. Now, I was mainly using the Ocean Band for runs, which obviously is designed for swimming, but even then with that strap, the clasp that they use isn't the best, I don't think, and it sometimes kind of flipped out of the, away from the strap as well, so I had to kind of tuck it in every now and then, uh, but it was comfortable in my kind of marathon run and the races and the training runs that I did. I think the trail loop, I think there's been nicer nylon uh, straps that Apple have done for its watches, and then the Alpine one as well, which is kind of geared towards hiking, I would say, as well. I don't think was particularly fantastic either. So yeah, for me, the straps, I think in terms of, you know, what Apple has done before, the ones that came and debuted with the Ultra, I don't think are the best that they've done. So I think the Apple Watch Ultra is a really good start uh, in terms of Apple's attempts to make a more serious sports watch. I think the Apple Watch Series watch was always a slightly underrated watch because the third party apps are so good. And actually the last few generations have had very strong GPS tracking really quite strong HR tracking as well. I actually used a previous version of the Apple Watch as my main sports watch at the time when, just because I was finding it more accurate than things like the Garmin and the Polars available at the time on distance tracking. These days, you have got the Garmin Epics and all the Garmin multiband watches and they are you know top of the range when it comes to GPS accuracy, but the Ultra is really good on all the stuff that really matters, I'd say. It's a very good sports watch in terms of the essentials it offers. Uh, you're still gonna be falling short on a few things and it's still not entirely synced up properly with things like the navigation services on the watch. I think there's kind of two big watches I think that would rival the Apple Watch Ultra I was considering buying it. One is the Garmin Epix 2 which is you know, the proper sports watch equivalent with an AMOLED screen so it looks a bit nicer. The, the Apple Watch is still the much better smart watch, it still looks nicer, it's got a better app store and all that but the Epix 2 does the sports tracking you know, exceptionally well. It's got the navigation tools built in that are really good, it's got really in-depth training analysis that you're not going to get on the Apple Watch at all. If you're in the market for a nice looking 
you know, really impressive sports watch. The Garmin FX2 still wins out on this front compared to the Apple Watch Ultra, though this is a very good sports watch and is a bit, you know, and is obviously a much better smart watch. But I think maybe the bigger challenge still might come from the cheaper Apple Watches. So the Series 8 doesn't get the button and it doesn't get the dual band GPS, but it does get the new sports tracking. And that is, I think, probably the biggest update on the Apple Watch this year is the new software updates that really make the native sports tracking app more usable. Series 8 is a smaller, you know, I think nicer looking watch and it's half the price of the uh, of the Epics. And what you're really missing out on is the extra lap button, which is annoying not to have, but is that a deal breaker for lots of people? You know, you're getting half the battery life, which again is annoying, but it's not the Apple Watch Ultra is the longest lasting watch in the world. And the dual band GPS is not great on the Apple Watch Ultra, but actually the Series 8 is also a very accurate GPS tracker that uses kind of a multi-satellite system uh, approach. So I think if you really want a nice smartwatch that does really good sports tracking, the Apple Watch Series 8 will fit the bill. The Ultra is the sportier watch, but I think uh, the Series 8 is a better looking watch and a lot cheaper. So yeah, there are a couple of good competitors, but I will say the Apple Watch Ultra, I think is one of, the best options on the market for people who do want that smarter experience in a serious sports watch. It will do the job of tracking your training very well. I don't think you're really missing out on too much if you're not too fussed about things like in-depth training, training analysis, and you can use third-party apps to upgrade the experience even more through things like Work Outdoors. So I think it's a really solid watch. I'm just not entirely convinced I wouldn't just go for the Series 8 because um, that is also a very good watch. I do think this is the best Apple Watch out there if you are training for a race. I think if you're, you know, if you're really serious about your training, you want all the benefits of an Apple Watch, which, you know, it is a great tool to have. It's like having an iPhone on your wrist. You can reply to text, you can answer calls when you're out and about. This is the best Apple Watch to buy. That said, it is still missing some of the, some of the kind of, key things I think for a running watch that its competitors have. If you look at every Garmin, every Polar, even Fitbit, they have recovery data and you know they look at your sleep, your heart rate, yesterday's load and they kind of give you some advice on what you should be doing and how you should be training. And I don't think that's just important for beginners. I think we all, you know, have the you know have the kind of tendency to overtrain at points and not realise, you know, when we're doing too much. There isn't any recovery data on the ultra i think you even have to personally i find it quite hard to even find the sleep data if i'm really i have you kind of have to dig around for it it's not ingrained in the watches and in the experience like it is for garmin and polar and i think that is missing i think if you're looking for a garmin that is a similar experience to the um the apple watch ultra i'd probably go for the epics too it's got a really like really beautiful screen and it has all the kind of recovery and mapping things that you'd expect from Garmin. It's around a similar price point, and I know that there's a video comparing the two watches on the run testers, so go and check that out. I think if you're just, if you're running a couple of times a week, you want an Apple Watch, you want to connect it to your Peloton, you want to reply to your texts, you want, you know, it to track your sleep, I would probably go for the Apple Watch 8. It's a lot cheaper. It's got the same kind of watch OS 9, running kind of capabilities it's got the same skin temperature sensor it's got most of the things this has but it hasn't got the action button it hasn't got the precision start so but it's a lot cheaper and i think if you're not kind of really if you're not using it as your main running watch if you've already got a garmin i wouldn't you probably don't need this and if you're kind of if you're not really doing a lot of running with it i'd say you can the apple watch 8 is probably is an excellent smartwatch too so save you money on that so I think my verdict is kind of fairly simple really. I think when it comes down to that bigger battery life, you've got that nice rugged design, you've got the action button, a lot of nice little touches that have come along. That makes this Apple Watch Ultra by far for me the best running watch that Apple has yet produced. I think it's also quite easily the best smartwatch for running. The Garmin Epix, you know, beautiful screen comes close to it, but in terms of all the smartwatch tools that you get, it's not near really in terms of what Apple's got and what it offers outside. You know, your run, your your life outside the run, the Apple Watch kind of wins hands down. However, I do have a little bit of a problem of the Ultra sort of tagging the name and some of the ways that this has been kind of marketed. I think if you're going up to kind of 50Ks, perhaps you could call this kind of an Ultra watch. I think if you're going beyond that, and I feel like some of the imagery that was used was sort of suggesting kind of multi-days and, you know, longer efforts, I just don't think this is quite there yet. I, you know, the battery life doesn't quite extend to those kind of um, those areas. I also just think that in terms of the overall kind of navigation experience, and what it offers isn't quite there for, I think, for most kind of offbeat kind of 
trail runners and, and ultra runners, this isn't going to quite cut it if you're going for long, long hours. So my verdict on the Apple Watch Ultra is that this is one of the best smartwatch for runners. And if you are an iPhone owner and you are looking for a watch that works well as a smartwatch and as a running watch, then you do get that in the Apple Watch Ultra. If you are looking for things like mapping and navigation support or uh, better support from that point of view, I would say go for the Garmin Epix 2, which is roughly around the same price. You're getting more battery life um, over a week as well, I would say, too. And then you've got all those kind of training analysis features and insights that you won't get on the Apple Watch Ultra natively. You might have to work a bit harder to find on the Apple App Store. So, yeah, for me, a very good smartwatch for runners. Not perfect. A good start for Apple with the Ultra. Um, and if you're an iPhone owner and looking for an Apple watch that's better suited for running and tracking runs, then this is the watch to get. Okay, so there you have it. That is our take on the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, if you've got any questions about our testing, let us know in the comments. Also, let us know what you think of the new format as well too. We've got other videos on the channel around the Ultra as well. So against the Garmin Epix and also against the Apple Watch series a as well so go check those out too um as always like and subscribe hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos and yeah we'll see you for the next run testers video